Hello, my name is Darren Thomas. I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to take a look at the cotangent periodic function. So let's go ahead and begin. So as you can see right here, we have our cotangent function. Uh, it's very clear how this behaves, I hope, in part by now. Uh, you can see this the space between each point, I mean each, each line, if you will. And so uh, that's that's his behavior and again the reason why we have those behaviors because sometimes when the absolute when the when the uh, when you look at the period again in the the period again we're going to talk about this more in a second but you know period is going to be ooh, period is uh, you know pi over the absolute value of B when this bottom value becomes a zero in whatever situation is undefined and that's why you have the space between it and it becomes periodic periodic in that it returns at a specific interval over and over and over again. Um, the actual function or the actual equation, if you will, is right here below. So you have a cotangent times the quantity of b times x minus c uh, plus d. And so we've talked about this before. The a kind of represents the stretching factor. And then you have the actual cotangent function here. Then you have your b, which is used to calculate the period, uh, whether it's you know stretched or compressed as well. The c is the phase shift going from the left to the right. And the D is kind of affects the vertical up and down a bit. And of course, in case you forgot, the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. And so cotangent is adjacent over op opposite, excuse me. And so this is an example right here. If you look at the triangle, adjacent over opposite is how you would calculate the cotangent. Whereas opposite over adjacent is how you do with tangent. So this is kind of the behavior of it. And so um, we talked about how to calculate the period. Um, and so now I want to kind of show you some examples. Now, right here, you can see that we have the black line represents the, the regular cotangent function that we saw in the previous slide. But now we have some manipulation of the A term. So by the A term, we're talking about this guy. We're talking about this guy right here. So the right here. And so that's what's happening is that when you have this uh, um, this uh, manipulating this uh, uh, a term, which is you know commonly called the amplitude when you're dealing with a sinusoidal function, uh, the when the when the number is greater than when a is greater than one, you can see here you kind of get this uh, this compression, if you will. In other words, if you look closely, it, it almost looks like a straight line. Uh, it's not exactly a straight line. But it looks very, very close to being a straight line, uh, but not exactly. And so when you have a number that is less than one, like you can see here, you can see that it gets stretched. It, it get, I mean, I'm sorry, it gets, yeah, no, I'm sorry, I'm correct. It gets stretched a little bit. So you have a stronger of an S shape, if you will. Now, if we made this negative, instead of it looping this way, it would loop, oh, if I can draw this, I don't know, I'm not a very good drawer. Um, it would loop kind of like this, if you will. Uh, that's what happens when it's a negative number. So the negative sign just kind of switches the direction of that shape, if you will. All right. Now for this one, we're manipulating the B term. And remember, the B term is used for calculating the period. And so you can see when the B term is greater than 1, you can see that the period gets compressed. Everything is closer together. You have a whole lot of brown lines here because that's what this one represents. But when B is less than 1, you can see that the, the period gets stretched out quite a bit. And so you can see, you just compare these two numbers here where we put a two here the first time, then a one third. It's, you know, it's like a, quite a huge difference in terms of the number, the frequency of the period. And that's how you can manipulate that term here. Again, this is all review because all the periodic functions have this sort of a behavior. Now on this slide, we're manipulating the uh, C term with the green color, with the green color, and we're manipulating the D term with the, the yellowish color here. So when you're messing with the C term, if you will, um, that is when you move the, the cotangent from, from left to right. And so here we got minus 1. You can see that compared to the, to the black line, it's moved to the right one unit. And of course, if we made this plus 1, it would move one unit to the left. That's what happens there. And then, of course, now with the D term here at the bottom, when you add a unit to it, you can see compared to the black, the black line, which is the regular cotangent, it's up one unit. That's what kind of happens there. And so positive makes it go up, negative makes it go down. And that's what's happening there. So let me try to wrap up what we talked about and conclude this video. So in this video, we talked about the cotangent periodic function. 
And so basically the cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. And so it's adjacent over opposite. Whereas tangent is opposite over adjacent when you're thinking about the trigonometric triangle, if you will. And so here at the bottom, you can clearly see the actual equation for this. It has the ABCD terms like the other uh, periodic function and the sinusoidal function. And this is how it behaves. And we looked at some examples of that, you know, how the different terms manipulate it, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we also talked a little bit about the behavior of the of um, the period and how it changes. That's also something we talked about. So this is kind of just more of the same, just from a, a different angle in terms of understanding how these um, periodic functions work. So I hope this video made sense for you. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.